Thank you, Joshila, and once again, good morning to my dear church family. Uh, it's amazing, but we are already in the eighth month of the year, and this has been truly an unusual year. Uh, I was just reading an article uh, just this morning, uh, and the article mentioned that it is possible that this pandemic may continue even not only at the end of this year, but probably even at the end of la next year. So uh, everything seems to be uh, so uncertain. And uh, talking about uncertainty, I think the messages we've been hearing over the past few weeks uh, have been helping us to deal with uh, the current situation with lockdowns and uh, uh, the, the difficulties we face on a daily basis. And I'm sure that our the messages that we have been uh, privileged to hear by our speaking team has been helping us with our walk with God. I can recall Praveen's message where he encourages us to hear God's voice or God's words to us what God may be telling us at this time. Uh, Sachin then came out with a message uh, telling us and showing us what we must do while we wait on God. We are waiting on God to intervene and to help us, you know, uh, survive this very difficult period. Uh, Joshila last week mentioned about how indeed no matter what situation we are in, we are loved and very precious to God, honored by God, and the fact that we can always trust him never to abandon us. I want to continue that same theme. And I want to, as we deal with the current challenges, and today I would like to talk about faith, even as we read uh, or led in the reading, scripture reading about faith. And I'm sure you will agree with me that faith is definitely needed in these uncertain times. We need the assurance that all will be, all will work out to be okay. And the question perhaps I could ask uh, this week is how do we have this faith? What is this faith we are talking about? Um, what is this faith that is necessary and required that will please God? So I want to revisit that very famous definition in Hebrews chapter 11 and where it talks about faith and the champions of faith. For that, give me just a moment and I'd like to uh, share my screen with you. Okay. Uh, All right. You will notice the title of my message is Faith is the Substance of Things Hoped For. And I'm sure you will recognize that uh, from the book of Hebrews. Let's just look at that. Uh, definition once again from Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 1. Notice it says, faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Now, the translation I'm using, NASB, that is the New American Standard uh, Version, uh, talks, you know, uses the word assurance of things hoped for. Now, many translations also, you know, use the same word. But interestingly enough, the word assurance can actually be like it is given in the NKJV. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So the footnote actually in, the, in most of the Bibles will clarify that the word assurance is probably more close to the original uh, Greek, which is substance. Now, 
our normal understanding of this uh, you know verse or this definition of faith means that we should be assured of things in the future we want to be sure of the future and we have to believe even if we are unable to see like you may have heard of the expression a leap in the dark you know it's almost like we want to leap you know even though it's dark and we are not able to see where we are going we are made to think that something it is something that i must do on my own i must exercise this hope this assurance even though i don't see this we might think we might be tempted to think that i must align my emotions and feelings to believe in something that i cannot see now yes it is true that we must exercise a certain belief a certain hope but there is something much more important for us to see in this particular verse uh and especially with that original greek that we see that faith is the substance of things uh you know that we hope for i was doing some little bit of study and i was looking at the interlinear bible and let me put that up on the screen you know the interlinear bible is a bible that uh, you know helps identify the greek and the hebrew words in the english translation so it sort of uh, gives you literally what is there in the original greek and notice the word substance is actually in the greek hypostasis you may have uh, heard of that word before hypostasis it is a greek word and uh, uh, the, the, what is what does this hypostasis mean and digging a little bit further i went to another chapter of the same book the word hypostasis also has an interesting reference to it and notice now i'm going to hebrews chapter 1 and verse 3 who and i'm sure you will all understand the you know who is being spoken of here hebrews 1 is talking about jesus that in the past we heard the prophets but now we have jesus himself come to us who being the radiance of his glory this is verse 3 in chapter 1 and the exact expression of his notice the word substance the word substance there is once again hypostasis okay so uh in the in the previous one substance meant hypostasis and here the word substance is referring to a person all right now let's see what we can conclude from this very brief initial study what can we conclude from that what we conclude is that jesus christ is the substance of faith that is the reason why we are told in hebrews chapter 11 and verse 1 faith is the substance of things hoped for what is it saying and telling us that jesus is our hope right when it says jesus is the substance of faith faith is a substance that means to say jesus is our hope it is not necessarily our feelings that you know that we must have hope but it is looking to jesus as the very substance of faith it is not just positive thinking on our part of a bright future that things will be okay it is not just some blind hope that we have like we said probably a leap in the dark but we our faith is grounded in a person in the substance of our or rather the substance of our faith is jesus christ he is our hope or you could say he is our evidence even though we don't see he is the evidence of things not seen i hope that brings in an interesting you know twist to the whole understanding that we have about faith so what can we conclude well it is who and what 
Jesus did, that is the substance of our faith. It is not just a mere positive hope that we have of the future, but we have something which is solid. And the, and the solid substance of faith is Jesus Christ our Lord. In other words, what we are saying is, if Jesus is somehow not true, if Jesus didn't exist, if Jesus was never crucified and never resurrected, then we have absolutely no hope. You know, our hope is only in the air. We have no reason to believe. And our hope will become completely and thoroughly useless, futile and a complete waste. It's a very interesting quote that I read from uh, the author Margaret Manning. Let me share that quotation with you. And she says in this article, The Being of Faith, she says, Christians affirm that the assurance of things hoped for is not simply found in rational content, right? Just in our thinking, but in a person that is Jesus Christ. For in Jesus, we see the promise fulfilled and the very substance of faith. It is to Jesus Christ and to him alone that the writer of Hebrews directs those who would look for the content of faith. Isn't that wonderful to know that Christ is the content of our faith. He is the evidence of our faith. He is the substance of our faith because he is real, he is true, and we know that it is because of him we can have hope, not just some positive thinking that we must exercise. So what are we saying? We are saying that faith has a divine element. Biblical faith is not just human. It doesn't just originate with our thinking and our positive feelings. But faith, biblical faith, originates with God in the person of Jesus Christ, our Lord. The faith we exercise is not independent of Christ. The faith we exercise is not something apart from Christ our Lord. Because Jesus is true, indeed he becomes the very substance of our faith. Isn't that what we are told in Hebrews chapter 12, which we also read, that we put that up on the screen. Hebrews chapter 12, beginning in verse 1, it says, Therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which is so easily ensnares us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. For what reason? And how do we do that? Verse 2 says, looking unto Jesus. And isn't this just a fantastic uh, you know, phrase? The author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him, endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat, sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Jesus Christ is the author of faith. You could say the substance of faith. In him, our faith begins. It is in him our faith matures and is completed. Uh, it is his faith that will carry us through. Notice it says, Looking, verse 2, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. In other words, Jesus himself exercised a particular faith to do what he did. Why did he do? Why did he endure the cross? Because he had the faith in his father that we would be redeemed. Humanity would be redeemed. So it is his faith in his father his heavenly father, that will carry us through. It is not our weak, faltering, wavering faith that will be okay. That doesn't mean to say we should not have belief. Yes, we must believe. We must put our faith in the very substance of faith that is Jesus Christ our Lord. Notice something very interesting that the Apostle Paul tells us. And this is found in Galatians chapter 2. And uh, once again, uh, digging a little bit uh, deeper, there is something very interesting for us to learn from here. Galatians chapter 2 and verse 16 tells us, know that a person is not justified by the works of the law, but by faith in Jesus Christ. So 
we to have put our faith in Christ Jesus that we may be justified by faith in Christ i want you to hold that thought we'll come back to that in a moment and not by the works of the law because by the works of the law no one will be justified i want you to go back to that uh, uh phrase where it says that we may be justified by faith in Christ and there is a a footnote there and i i put the footnote below uh, on the screen it can more uh, accurately be translated through the faithfulness of jesus christ or justified on the basis of the faithfulness of jesus christ what is this saying yes the author of galatians is telling us yes we must have faith in jesus as he says in the first part of of uh, the verse but how are we justified on the basis of the faithfulness of jesus so we have faith in jesus but we are also believing in the faith of jesus or the faithfulness of jesus in other words we are not saved by our faith as you know by itself it is the faithfulness or the faith of jesus christ that is what ultimately saves us the faithfulness of jesus christ we put our faith in the faithfulness of jesus christ jesus and all that he accomplished becomes the object of our faith theologian uh, prescott jernigan tells us that the faith we exercise is the actually the act of christ in us let me share that quotation from you this is taken from the article that he wrote uh, the faith of christ by prescott jernigan and he says the following he says this belief of ours is not a mere product of human volition that is that is just of human origin but he says it is the act of christ in us with paul then faith is the synthesis of christ's gift and man's effort in other words it's inclusive faith is a gift that we receive you know through the substance of faith who is jesus christ and we put our belief in this substance of faith which is jesus and that is how indeed we participate in the very ministry of jesus christ our lord to to uh help us understand that just a little bit more clearly that the fact that this faith we have that we put in jesus is actually a gift of god to us actually a fruit of the holy spirit let me go to that very very popular verse that we use so very often galatians chapter 5 and verse 22 it says the fruit of the spirit is love joy peace forbearance kindness goodness faithfulness can you imagine that the very faith we exercise is actually a fruit of the spirit working in us right it shows us where our faith actually originates it originates in the very substance of faith going back to hebrews 11 and the substance of faith is jesus christ our our uh, lord so our faith is actually the fruit of the spirit it or- originates in god and the ministry of the holy spirit brings us this close by i mean close into us so after all this discussion you may be saying okay so what what is the big deal about all of this <laughs> all right now let's see uh, how does this understanding help us and i have two points i'd like to share with you and uh, two scriptures that go along with it the first one is how does this understanding help us the first one is when we doubt and our faith is weak which i think happens many times very often i can be very honest and say it happens to me often that my faith is weak uh you know we are told don't be discouraged look to jesus to help you to be faithful right look to jesus to help you to be faithful because our faith falters many times our faith is not strong enough to fight against the disappointments and the discourages of this life 
look at what we are facing. We are facing so much uncertainty. I mean, what is our faith? Where is our faith? Well, it can be very, very weak in situations like this. But we are told not to be discouraged, but to look to Jesus. And I'm reminded of that very interesting incident, Mark, Mark chapter 9. You remember the father who brought his son uh, to Jesus because this son was, uh, you know, infested by demons and he needed to be healed, uh, delivered. And the disciples tried to do that, but failed. And Jesus then chides them for their faithlessness. And then interestingly enough, Jesus poses this question and notice what he says in verse 23 of Mark 9. If you can, said Jesus. In other words, this man said, please heal my son. Well, if you can, said Jesus. Uh, you know, and then he goes on to say, everything is possible. For one who believes. And when he said that. The father of the boy responds. What does he say? Immediately the boy's father exclaimed. I do believe. Help me overcome my unbelief. Help me overcome my unbelief. I'm sure we can identify with that response. On so many occasions. Yes. I have faith. But then sometimes my faith fails. Sometimes my faith wavers. Sometimes. I struggle to believe. I struggle. I have so many doubts. And that's why this father is saying, help me. Help me with my unbelief. Why would he say that? Because Jesus can strengthen our faith. He is the originator of our faith. He is the perfecter of our faith. He is the one who is the author of our faith. And that is the reason why when we are down, when we are unable to muster up the belief, we can go to Jesus and say, Lord Almighty, help me with my unbelief. Help me with my wavering faith. Help me with my doubts. And Jesus is there to help us. That's one point. That's one way we, we can be helped by what we discussed. Let me share with you one more thought. How does this help us? And uh, we need to realize ultimately the faithfulness of, of Jesus will carry you through. Remember, we read in Galatians 2. It is the faithfulness of Jesus that will save us. That is why we put our faith in the faithfulness of Jesus. And I go back to Hebrews 12 where it says, Let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. He is the one who will carry us through when we struggle with our faith. And so, brethren. When life is difficult, our faith may be stretched. Sometimes it may even seem that it is failing. That's the time you must remember that Jesus will carry us through. Because he will remain faithful to us just as he was faithful to his father. Not only is Jesus the object of our faith, he is the very substance of our faith. And that is why he will carry us through. You know, many times uh, reading in the news, I hear about so many people who have such tremendous faith. And I keep wondering, how is it that they have such faith? Just recently, I was reading about how somebody in Somalia, you know, the terrorists had captured this man. And I think he was a Christian and they beheaded him. And I, I wondered to myself, how did he maintain his faith in Jesus? Even when going through such a gruesome situation where he was beheaded. I can only say that Jesus gave him the faith to remain strong. In spite of the fact that he was literally going to be cut by the sword. His head taken off. Can we have faith? I know, we are, we, I know it is difficult for us to have faith in such, such a situation. But Jesus will help us. Jesus will help us. And so brethren. With Paul let us say. I live. Yet not I. But Christ lives in me. And as Christ lives in us. He will supply us. What is lacking in our faith. And so brethren. As we. Come to the communion now. Uh, 
What a privilege we have to invite Jesus afresh into our lives. Just as we uh, had the Bible study this past Wednesday, we talked about how we come again and again to uh, you know, partake of the communion because we need to be continually participating in Jesus. That shows our faith in the faithfulness of Jesus. Every time we come to the table, we are showing our faith in the faithfulness of Jesus. We are saying, refill me. Fill me up, Lord Jesus. Give me the faith that you have because I don't have the faith. That true faith originates in you. And so like the boy's father in Mark 9, let us ask Jesus to increase our faith and help us with our unbelief. And may the Holy Spirit continue his ministry, his work in us to produce the fruit of faithfulness. And may his great faithfulness inspire us to be faithful to him. Before I pray for a blessing upon the elements, you may bring your elements together at this time. Let us uh, do this in celebration of the faithfulness of God, of the faithfulness of Jesus Christ our Lord. Let us always remember that God loves us as we have been repeatedly being told. But it is because of that love, his mercy towards us is great. Because of his mercy, his faithfulness is great. And his mercies and his faithfulness are new every morning. I just want to play a small clip of a song that should remind us of the faithfulness of Jesus Christ towards us. After which we will pray and partake of the communion. <laughs> pray and partake of the communion that we are privileged to come to the table of the Lord. Gracious Lord, as we reflect upon the scriptures we've read, as we continue to live in a time of uncertainty, Lord, our faith on so many occasions falters and sometimes it is stretched to a point where our doubts overcome our faith, our belief. And it's at that time, Father, we know that the faithfulness of Jesus never fails. Indeed, they are new every morning. And today we want to renew that understanding and that knowledge we have that Jesus Christ will carry us through. Even though many a times our faith may completely fail, Lord Jesus, 
we can along with the father of the boy in Mark 9 only say, help us with our unbelief. Strengthen us in spite of the many failings that we go through. Grant us, Lord, the evidence that is in Jesus. Indeed, because he is the very substance of our faith. And so we come to you for that refilling, for that reassurance, for that evidence. Indeed, you are the evidence, Lord. And we ask you to bless this wine and this bread wherever we are. We ask you, Lord, to uh, extend your grace as we participate in it, in the faith that you have given to us. We ask you to strengthen us even as we continue to live in the faithfulness of Jesus. And as we live in his faithfulness, help us, Father, to believe and exercise our own faith in the very substance of faith, Jesus Christ our Lord. In his name we pray. Amen. Let us uh, take the bread and recognize that Jesus Christ in his faithfulness went to the cross and endured the cross. He was so faithful to his father for our sake. Let us participate in the bread, which is symbolic of the body broken for us. Let us take the cup, which is symbolic of the blood of Jesus Christ shed for us. And in, in that sacrifice, we have been justified, not because of the works of the law, but because of the faithfulness of Jesus in whom we put our faith, the blood of Jesus Christ our Lord. Thank you, brethren. God bless you.